know it's Miss D Gordon representing. Hello everyone, I'm Donisha Gordon and this is DG Makes Math Easy, where we are intentional about making math new dimensional. Today we'll be looking at the topic certs. We will outline a few basic concepts and then we will look at some CSEC multiple choice questions. Please remember to like and share this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe and if you have already done that, then click the notification bell so that you do not miss any of our next videos. Feel free to say in the comments which topics you would like to see being reviewed. As you know, keep looking to the left side of your screen as there will be some important points as we work through our questions. For our first question, we are being asked to simplify this expression. Root 2 plus 3 root 2 minus 4 root 2 minus 2 root 2. The first thing that we notice is that all of these are what we call like certs. I'm sure you've heard the term like terms or unlike terms. So in the same way, we have like certs and unlike certs. Now, these are all like certs because they all have the same radicard. That is, they have the same number under the root sign. And they are also of the same root. So all of these terms have the square root of two. So the same principle applies as when it comes to simplifying like terms. So the only thing we're interested in is the coefficient for each term. All right, so here we go. The coefficient here is one, three, negative four, negative two. And so I'm going to operate on those. One plus three, that's going to be four, minus four, that's zero, minus two, that's going to be negative two, root two. Some people like to do it in parts. So even if you combine these two and said four root two, minus six root two, it would still have taken us to negative two root two. In this question, simplify root 28 minus root 63 plus root 112 minus root 175. Now there is a law that we must know when we are dealing with roots. The root of a product is the product of the roots. So for example, root 28 could be expressed as root two, times root 14. As long as you know two factors of 28, then you can express root 28 as the product of two roots. Or root 28 is equal to root seven times root four. We are going to apply that principle to these roots that we have in this question. Now our first question had like thirds, and so it was very easy to simplify. For this expression, we are going to make it easier on ourselves, and so we are going to create some like thirds. I'll give you five seconds to tell me a common factor for 28, 63, 112, and 175. What number divides exactly into 28, 63, 112, 175? You can use the rules of divisibility to know what number is going to these numbers without leaving a remainder. The common factor for 2863, 112, and 175 is 7. So we have a common factor of 7. And so a common factor of root 28, root 63, root 112, and root 175 is going to be not 7, but root 7. So let's go right ahead and express each of these as products of root 7. So this is going to be root four times root seven minus root nine times root seven plus root 16 times root seven minus root 25 times root seven. Now, what is it that you notice about the coefficient of root seven? We have square root four, square root nine, square root 16, square root 25. 4, 9, 16, and 25 are what we call square numbers. And so we can go ahead to further simplify by finding the square root of each of these numbers. The square root of 4 is 2, so that's 2 root 7. Square root of 9, 3 root 7, plus 4 root 7, minus 5 root 7. And since we have all of them expressed as like thirds, then we can go ahead and operate on the coefficients. Feel free to join your positive terms, 
Most persons like to do that. 2 root 7 plus 4 root 7 minus 3 root 7 minus 5 root 7. That's fine. 2 plus 4 gives us 6 root 7. Minus 3 minus 5 gives us minus 8 root 7. 6 root 7 minus 8 root 7 gives us negative 2 root 7. For our third example, we are also going to create like thirds. Now, is there any number that is a factor of 27, 12, 20, and 45? No, there isn't. And so we are going to see if we can find pairs of terms that have common factors. In other words, is there a common factor of, let's say, 27 and 12? Is there a common factor of 20 and 45? A common factor of 27 and 12 is 3. And so we can express both of these as products of root 3. And so this will be root 9 root 3 minus root 4 root 3. And so we can express these as products of root 5. So this is going to be root 4 times root 5 minus root 9 root 5. Please note that the two terms that are beside each other may not have a common factor. So if you get a question which requires you to change up the order of the terms, then that's fine. We will now go ahead and simplify. 3 root 3 minus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 5 minus 3 root 5. We already have our like series beside each other and so we work on the coefficient. 3 minus 2, that's 1 root 3. 2 minus 3, that's negative 1 root 5. And so our final answer is root 3 root 5. For this question, we will be applying the rule that we recalled earlier about the product of two roots. Both roots in this case have coefficients, and so we are going to work on those whole numbers first. 5 times 2 gives us 10. And now we multiply those roots as long as they are like roots. So root 6 times root 18 will give us root 108. To determine whether you are through simplifying, you ask yourself if there is any square number that is a factor of 108. 9 is a factor of 108 and 9 is also a square number. And so I can express this as 10 times root 9 times root 12. 9 times 12 gives us 108. So here we go. 10 times square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3 times root 12. And so this will give us 30 root 12. Are we through? No, we're not. Because if we look at the number 12, there is also a square number that is a factor of 12. And that number is 4. And so right now we have 30 times root 4 times root 3. We can find the square root of 4. And so we go ahead. 30 times 2 root 3, which gives us 60 root 3. And that would be our final answer. Now we could have saved ourselves a little more time. If when we looked at 10 root 108, we picked out a bigger square number than 9 as a factor of 108. And such number is 36. So this is square root of 36 times square root 3. The square root of 36 is 6. And so we have 10 times 6 times root 3, which gives us 60 root 3. So this means in simplifying an answer like this, you want to look for the biggest square number that you can find as a factor of this radicard. And this is the last thing before we jump into our CSEP questions. This is nothing new to you as long as you already know how to add, subtract, or multiply thirds. And we just did that. And so this should come really smoothly. Using the distributive law, which you would have already been exposed to, we go ahead and multiply each term in the first bracket by each term in the second bracket. 2 times square root of 3 gives us 2 times root 3. 2 times negative 7 gives us negative 14. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 gives us positive square root of 9. Square root of 3 times negative 7 gives us negative 7 times root 3. We notice that we can simplify square root 9 to 3. Now earlier when we multiply square root of 3 times square root of 3, 
we got square root of 9. We further worked that out to give us 3. Now, it does help by saving you time if you already know that 3 is the result you get when you multiply root 3 by root 3. We will now go ahead and work on our like terms. Our constants, negative 14 plus 3 is going to be negative 11. And 2 root 3 minus 7 root 3 will give us negative 5 root 3. Now I have three CSET multiple choice questions for you. Let's get right into it. Our first CSET question is pretty simple. What is a common factor of 18 and 50? That's going to be 2. And so we're going to express both terms as products of root 2. So this will be root 9 times root 2 plus root 25 times root 2. This will give me 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2, which will give me 8 root 2. And I am through. Let's move to our next question. We are asked to simplify this expression. 1 plus root 3 divided by root 3 minus 1. In order to simplify this, we use a process called rationalization. And it is a process by which we get rid of radicals. We will be rationalizing, specifically, the denominator. The question that you ask yourself at this point is, by what can I multiply my denominator and ensure that when I'm finished multiplying, I will not have a square root left in my answer? The answer to that is a term called the conjugate. Now, with a little help from the notes on the side of our screen, the conjugate of root 3 minus 1 will be root 3 plus 1. And I'm multiplying root 3 minus 1 by root 3 plus 1. But the point is, if I multiply my denominator by that, then I have changed the value of the expression that I have on the board. And so I need to also multiply my numerator by the same thing. It's pretty much as if I'm multiplying the entire expression by 1. So now I have the original value of the expression restored. And so we go ahead and apply the distributive law. Let's go. 1 times root 3 gives us root 3. 1 times 1, that gives us 1. Root 3 times root 3, as we explored earlier, is going to be 3. Root 3 times 1 will give us root 3. Now, if you take a careful look at these two expressions that are being multiplied, you notice that the only thing different is the sign that is between. And so here we should recognize the concept of difference of two squares. So if I have root 3 minus 1 being multiplied by root 3 plus 1, that should give me root 3 squared minus 1 squared. So here we go. We now focus on our numerator and we simplify. We keep our constants at the front of the expression and so this is going to be 1 plus 3 gives us 4. Root 3 plus root 3 gives us 2 root 3. And this is being divided by root 3 squared is going to be 3 minus 1 squared, which is 1. And this then gives us 4 plus 2 root 3 over 2. If we take a look at the four options that we are given, then we notice that we cannot leave our expression like this. And so we can go ahead and divide each term in the numerator by the denominator. 4 divided by 2 plus 2 root 3 divided by 2. 2 into 4 goes 2 times plus root 3. Our next example should get you a little more comfortable. Similarly, we are going to be simplifying by rationalizing our denominator. We will multiply our denominator by its conjugate, which is 1 minus root 5. If I do that to my denominator, then I need to also do it to my numerator. This will be root 5 minus root 5 times root 5, which will give us just 5. Negative 1 times 1. Negative 1, negative 1 times negative, root 5 is going to be positive root 5. And that is going to be divided by 1 squared minus root 5 all squared, which is 5. So you can choose if you just want to write 5 there, right about now. Equals, we work on our constants. Negative 5 minus 1 gives us negative 6. 
root 5 plus root 5 gives us 2 root 5. This is being divided by 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Now we're going to also simplify by dividing each term in the numerator by our denominator. 3 over 2 minus root 5 over 2. None of our answers look like this. Based on the fact that our denominator for both terms is 2, then we can go ahead and factor out a half out of each term. If we factor out a half out of 3 over 2, we get 3, minus factoring out a half out of root 5 over 2 gives us root 5. And that is our last question. Please let me know in the comments if this video was helpful to you. It's goodbye from DG Makes Math Easy and I'm Donisha Gordon.